This tutorial presents an overview of some of the ideologies that are certainly not a uh, major or basis for the mainstream political parties that you will typically find in uh, contemporary democracies, but ideologies that nonetheless have mattered and influenced the political agenda and the political landscape in different ways. So outside the mainstream, I'm going to cover that those uh, first, and then I'll give some notes on totalitarian ideologies that still do matter. So ideologies outside the ma mainstream. By this I mean that these are ideologies that haven't had as great electoral success or resulted in the formation of widely appealing political parties in entrenched democracies, but they still have had influence. Um, so we can talk about religious fundamentalism, for instance, that have had influence on various democracies. Uh, and by this I don't mean Christian democracy of the type we see in the Christian Democratic Party in uh, Germany. I would label there that more of a conservative party with uh, religious um, uh, influence and so on. I'm talking here about key values like having uh, uh, religion be more of the guide to all of society than other values. So religion and politics, the fundamentalist impulse, anti-modernism, sometimes even uh, militancy. Uh, we could uh, divide here between passive and active fundamentalism. So, for instance, the Amish of the US would believe that religion dictates social, economic, and political pr principles for their own communities, but they're not terribly interested in uh, imposing those views on anyone else. Now, active fundamentalism does want to impose uh, their views on others. This is more of an active missionary role, maybe more like the evan evangelicals in the US. This idea this, uh, that they have to confront lack of moral fiber or vices in society, that they have, they're have concerned with regenerating a virtuous society through opposition and sometimes even combat. So it's a much more militant type of uh, approach to politics and, and the emphasis here is really on traditional values. Uh, feminism, of course, has had also a tremendous impact on politics um, over, the past, uh, over the past century. We can go back to extending the suffrage to women and so on. So key values here is sex and gender, equality and difference, and critique of the public-private divide and patriarchy as a s structural system of power. I've included here a few names, uh, Mary Wollstonecraft, Betty Friedan, and Simone de, Bo de Beauvoir. Wollstonecraft is one of the earliest uh, people to stress equal rights for women, so this goes way before the 20th century or even the late 19th century. Uh, and she was talking particularly about education and, and uh, viewing women as persons which was not something that was taken for granted in a legal sense uh, in her day. Uh, Betty Friedan, uh, who uh, has been credited with stimulating being one of the key instigators to the emergence of second wave feminism uh, in the 60s, uh, attacking cultural myths about how women belong in the home and so on. Simone de Beauvoir argued that women's so social position has been de determined by social, uh, not biological factors. So that uh, we have that distinction between biology and gender, the social construction of gender. And she highlighted the extent to which male has been represented as positive and normal, while the feminine has been presented as the other. And these thoughts still matter today in politics. You can see it in a lot of uh, social democratic parties that have ad uh, adapted and adopted a lot of feminist ideas. In just about any social justice movement will include uh, these ideas in one shape or form. Two main contemporary thrusts I, I notice here is justice, equal treatment and pay, individualist focus if you will. Uh, but also gender roles in the sense that Marx divided uh, society into economic classes, feminism can divide classes into different gender roles and which gender role has had the structural power in society. So in that sense it's a collectivist focus and draws heavily on so social constructivism. Anarchism is another uh, stream of thought. Unlike uh, social democracy, it's highly anti-statist. 
anti-clerical and argues for a free economy. I've noticed here William Goodwin, uh, Godwin, uh, Mikhail Bakunin and Proudhon. All of them are anti-authoritarian. Bakunin as a collectivist, he's talking about self-governing communities of free individuals. Proudhon attacked uh, traditional property rights but also attacked communism and argued instead for mutualism, sort of a, a cooperative, productive system geared towards needs over profits. And there have been some local experiments with anarchist governments. Uh, some have succeeded, some have failed. Uh, it's an ideology that attracts uh, radicals to this day, even though there's never been a major political party uh, that has been successful based on anarchism. And then there are, of course, the totalitarian uh, ideologies, uh, and I include here communism and fascism that have been the two major totalitarian ideologies impacting the 20th century, uh, which can be uh, clearly tracked in terms of body count. Communism, key values here are revolution, dictatorship of the proletariat, avant-gardism and false consciousness. Uh, Karl Marx wrote the Communist Manifesto in 1848, and argued that the proletariat should take control of the means of production by force. Lenin developed these ideas and was the founder of orthodox communism, uh, which dominated 20th century communist thought. He argued that you can't wait for the proletariat to become aware enough and to mobilize itself as a class. Instead, you have to have a small elite within the proletariat that leads the proletariat and takes over. So he argued for the need for an armed revolution and for totalitarian rule. He argued that terror needs to be used to defeat the enemy, the bourgeoisie. You can't allow freedom of the press because people don't know what's good for them. And if they read the wrong things, they might get the wrong ideas. So one party ruled by the avant-garde of the proletariat was his recipe for society. And his self-image then would be the soldier of liberation who builds the brave new world by any means necessary. Uh, Antonio Gramsci here can be seen as an offshot, offshoot of communism, if you will. Uh, he challenged the Leninist avant-gardism and uh, Euro-communism is based on his writings as an alternative to Leninism. It's been an important uh, philosopher for some uh, communist parties in uh, Europe, uh, but was never as important as Lenin uh, for, world, for the worldwide movement. Uh, fascism is often seen as communism's polar opposite. And while there are similarities, there are also significant differences. Uh, the key values here for fascism is anti-rationalism, struggle, leadership and elitism, socialism, and militant nationalism. Uh, and the key thinkers would be Mussolini and Hitler. Mussolini argued that the state must be or recognized as the universal ethical will. So the state uh, knows better than the citizens and the state should be elevated above the citizens and uh, therefore society has to be totalitarian. Human values cannot exist or have value without the state, he argued. And Hitler took these ideas and bound them in with anti-Semitism uh, and expansionist, uh, expansionist uh, nationalism, believe in an eternal struggle that, that uh, struggle is good for people. They both appeal to nativist myths about blood and about uh, the, the, the people, if you will, rather than logic. Uh, it's also very social Darwinist. It embraces the idea that survival of the strongest is a good value. So uh, weakness is to be looked down on and the weak should be uh, culled from the herd, if you will. So through struggle and war, the people will be strengthened and purified. It evokes a lot of uh, visions of heroes, if you will. So the self-image would be the perfect predator warrior who dies the beautiful death on the battlefield or returns bringing glory to his nation. And these ideas still appear in public space. I would encourage you to take a look at the movie 300 and look for all these key values of fascism in it basically uh, romanticizes these values and presents the Spartans as the perfect fascists. And that's an overview of uh, some ideologies outside the mainstream that have had uh, a lot of influence on contemporary politics.